Um, what I have here is a uh, 1934 Enfield number two Mark one, and it's uh, the usual caliber for uh, the like is uh, 32 Smith and or 38 Smith and Wesson. And it's uh, almost like areas of it are kind of delicate. I'll throw in some pictures I took when I was taking it apart. Uh, I've never done an, anything like this one before. She's different. But you can see by some of these stains, she was a bit rusty. There was uh, quite a bit of rust here. You can see the petting. I mean, the gun is is uh, quite old. It's uh, uh, 34, say 2014. It's 70, 80, 81 years old because it's 2015. And uh, um. Anything from England, being such a humid country, I tend to take them all apart. But I've never seen one that was quite as bad as this one. I think it's been in storage for a long time. It's not. It's not to the point where it's not usable. I mean, it's just got some uh, kind of nasty pitting on it, and I uh, soaked the thing overnight in ballastol. I just did the uh, cover. Get the stuff off my hands because I just cleaned that. This is the uh, cover for the left side after you put all the components back in the internal parts. This cleaned up very well. So what I did was I sprayed it with ballastol, let her soak. Um, then I took a brass uh, where is it? Brass wire brush and I scrubbed her out and it came really good. I tried the plastic one the uh, plastic one wouldn't wouldn't move it so the ballastol soaked it up a lot but I took it in the sink don't tell my wife and I ran it under hot water and scrubbed her out and as you can see she turned out pretty clean looks pretty good. The barrel I've been uh, that's been an ongoing scru scrubbing project the uh, the wooden grips were a bit, they were loose, it's almost like they're rocking and it turns out it's because of the rust and that was starting to build up underneath it. So it's a really good idea if you get anything like this. Even if you can't strip it down, if you're not comfortable stripping it down like this, like I took pictures as I took it apart, um, to at least you could still get at that, at least spray it with oil. Like, like I use I like the ballastol or as long as you get something in there some kind of preservative it's all kinds of gun oils that work because you know it's better than just letting her rust but I stripped the bugger down and uh, give her, giving her a good scrubbing see she looks pretty grody there but that's uh, not as uh, there you go this funky light on this camera it's not as uh, it's, it's not structurally harming anything it's just it'll be covered by the grips the grips themselves I gave them uh, they're pretty pretty dirty actually but it is a surplus revolver and I've given it two coats of ballastol and cleaned up all that and it sucked that stuff up I mean it uh, it sucked it up like crazy so the last dose I gave it not so much but the uh, the wood was dry so that's all taken care of all this stuff's been sprayed in ballastol and it's been soaking in it and now I'm just in the scrubbing stages so I can reassemble it the barrel I scrubbed that out with ballastol I'm working on that I get the I had the uh, cylinder all stripped down um, pretty easy that's actually screwed on so when you put the ejector star back in place there you just stick a pin through that hole and it screws off and the whole assembly comes out so I get in there and I clean that all out lubed it up with ballastol 
So that's ready to go back on. So I just got to get the frame cleaned up. Once that's cleaned up, then I'll individually clean these things up. I mean, there's a spring from the 1800s, really. It's quite interesting. I'll video putting this thing back together. It's kind of kind of interesting, the design of this end field. But anyway, I'm going to get my brass wire brush, return to the sink, and give this a scrub. Get this uh, scrubbed up. So you can see the petting, but it's all cleaned out. All the rust is gone, all the uh, old dried up cosmoline is gone. And it's just a nice film of ballast all left. And she's got some hurting pits. Fortunately, it's all in places where you're, you're not going to really see it. But this side here, she, she's uh, seen a few battles. 1934, this thing just might have seen a few battles. So now I'm putting the, uh, get the camera back where it needs to be. I'm putting the cylinder lock back in, and it's got this itty bitty little spring. Get my, there we go, get my groovy little light on here. So, there's a little tiny spring in there. And you got to compress that and get it on this pin because this pin is part of the the, the uh, frame. And the shot off on me once, fortunately, I found it reasonably fast. So you got to compress that little bugger, start sliding this over the pin. And what I'm doing now, you can see where the cylinder lock goes into the notch there, is let, walking this bugger on. So I just get a little push and then you can see she's clicked in there and very gently get her spring so I got the trigger the triggers next to go back in now I gotta get this little fella goes in here back on the subject there buddy there you go Oop, get the light on so I'm just doing it this way because I only got one hand. And that pin. Actually, I'll take take this off. See if I can get them in the hole. see how that works against the cylinder lock it's a flat like a plunger type deal and as you mark it the okay, next piece that goes on is a hammer Okay, what was holding it up was it was just catching on the on the little catch that's on the trigger there. So slipped right in. It's best not to force. If you take a look, instead of forcing things, you will uh, save yourself a lot of grief and broken parts. Now I can put the hand back in. There. And next. This out of the way will be the uh, that lever that spring actuates your hammer there. So I'll stick that in. Not sure the name of all these parts, so I'll get that tapped in there. Now when I tap it in, I got the pins just sitting there, it's just in the hole. Now where to put that thing? There it is. This has got to go in here. Make sure you're south of this pin for the pivot pin for the hammer. I'm going to slide him in there like that. Um, I'm going to go down and put this 
uh, frame on, on the anvil of my vise and I'm going to tap that pin through. I want all this brace because it's fairly thin. Okay, I got the pin back in. And this uh, lever's back in place. We'll put the hand in. Stay on target here. There. Now, you can see there'll be the when I put the spring in. You'll see how all this works. It's pretty slick. It's a double action system and this is pretty slick how that's set up. Okay, I guess the next thing is a spring. Alright, I'm going to try to do this with one hand. There's a spring. Squeeze that bugger in. Hey, look at that. Oh, I tried to come right out the other side, didn't I? Alright, spring's in place. So the only thing I have left to do, you can see there's like a little cup in there. I don't know if you can see that or not. And it's got a, there's a pin machined into the end of this little arm on the end of the hammer. I've got to bring that down and hook that fella in there. That's how I get it apart. And hopefully I can, I can do that. I should be able to. Uh, that's going to be a two-hand job, so I'll just... Probably a pair of pliers would be a little better. I'm going to try to do it by hand first. And I'll get back to you and I'll make out with that. <laughs> and as you can see, it did require a small pair of needle nose. So I just grabbed onto it here, pushing back. Because that tends to want to run ahead when you put the pressure on it. So with the pliers, just pulled it down. And just put that into the little fork that's on the end of that spring. So that's all back together. Yeah. Quite the uh, mechanism. Yep. Okay, so we got this all assembled. Get a bit of an idea how all that works. Good. All right. Got the plate, the uh, cover back on. Plate, whatever you want to call it. Everything works. Double action works. Put the grips on next. Okay, right, grips are on. Uh, next fun part will be uh, putting the uh, catch on here for the barrel. I cleaned up the spring. Some some. 50-year-old Cosmoline stuck in there, so you all that out. No rust, fortunately. The uh, little pen just fits in that hole there. There you go. And just take this bad boy. Again, I'm trying to do this with one hand. Slide them in place. Now I'll just push against that spring a bit. And I uh, got the pin here, right there, leaning against the cylinder. Slide them in, screw them in, and that'll be done. Next, I just put this catch back on. Just slides in place there. It's two screws, shouldered screws. Hold that in. So next, you get the uh, little pawl. Slides in there. And that's what uh, the hook goes up on the inside. And of course, when you slide that in, when you open the, when you break open the uh, barrel, it pushes on the extractor. So I'll, uh, I'll slide that bad boy on there. Push that down. Push that up. So it fits up inside the. This locks into the screw there. And of course that uh, knocked the pole out of place. Oh, it's just no big deal. I'll just pull them back down. There we go. And then he's lined up. All I gotta do now is slip the uh, frame back in here. Put the 
pin back in to in the screws and that should be it so we may go with that okay got the pin in um, it's machined on one side take that off for uh, this little fella here to fit on which helps activate the, the uh, extractor so we put that on of course that everything's got to fit in that machine notch so we'll put this on there's a long screw here goes right through and it's got a machined end on it which will fit in here to keep that sucker from rocking and then there's these two little screws here of course one goes in here and the other one goes on the other side so I'll put those on and that's that should be it all right so I got that screw in there locks this little bugger in place goes right through from the other side uh, so that's all back in got the screws on the end of the hinge pin there don't over tighten these because it'll jam up your uh, your uh, it'll tighten up too much and you won't be able to get her apart so I must have done something right and as you can see the extractor works everything is uh, functioning as it should boy they got some bits and springs in this thing double action works good and this bad boy is finished de-rusted scrubbed lubed fixed and uh, even the grips are tight now the, yeah they're nice and tight it's got a little bit of petting in the barrel and I'll you know, the, oh yeah look at that get right in there at that light I'll tell you she's uh, actually it's, some people say they're ugly I, I kind of like it the internal mechanisms have you just seen is quite fascinating at least to me it is it's uh, different it's it's like a kind of a mixture of the old and the new that that spring is something else and buddy that spring has got power but uh, anyway it's back together and then my next job is clean this mess up before the wife comes home of course I have a couple of weeks left to do that